Hi, I'm Mike, and today I'd like to talk about the ZFS file system. It is a wonderful file system, moved over from BSD to work in Linux. I've been using ZFS for a few years now, ever since I built my first FreeNAS box with eight three terabyte hard drives in a RAID Z2 array, and the subsequent death of the box. I had a bolt of lightning hit the house a few years ago, and even though everything was hooked up to surge protectors, I had still lost several pieces of electronics due to a massive electrical surge. So that really sucked. I might have lost a lot of important stuff like pictures of family members that are no longer with us because, you know, obvious reasons. And important projects I was working on or, you know, my entire movie collection. You know, that I spent hours upon hours upon hours upon hours working on, you know, ripping them from DVD or VHS. And I know I kind of dated myself there. But, you know, thanks to software-defined storage like ZFS, I didn't lose a single file. So that's why I'm so passionate about having good backups and redundancy of the important stuff. I'm not talking about my backup solution today. I'm here to share a story with you and show you how to set up a ZFS array on Debian because reliable storage is the best kind of storage. Let's get started. The setup process is pretty easy. Just enable the contrib and non-free repos in the sources.list file, update and install the needed packages, install the kernel modules, configure the array, set permissions, and you're set. So. Here's how you get started installing ZFS. So what you're going to want to do is edit your sources.list file. So I use them. So we're going to do vim etsy apt sources.list if I can type today. So here's our, our apt sources.list file. Uh, you, you'll notice right in here that after main, you have contrib and non-free after every line in here. It really just these four. Uh, I kind of set everything up in a script, so anytime it's all main, it added contrib and non-free to the end of the line. So here's what. So that's that's what you're going to want to add. Then to exit in vim, hit escape and then colon wq for write and quit. And since that's a read-only file system, blah, 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 you should have done sudo anyway. Because that is a system file. That is a, it's owned by root. And then once you get that saved, you'll just need to do sudo apt update. And run updates. And we're good there. So now, uh, you just need to install the Linux headers and the Linux image AMD 64. So I'm not sure what kernel version you're running. I'm running Debian Buster. So right now I'm running kernel 4.19.0-5. So to make it easy for everybody for everybody involved, I actually I actually automated this. It's over on my GitHub page. I'll show you that in just a minute. So what you're going to want to do to install uh, the Linux headers and the image and whatnot. So you're going to do sudo apt install linux headers and you're going to do a variable actually i'm going to do this and i do that in quotations you name dash r close it and close it again and linux image amd 64 and you know I've already got that installed, so not so that's good. Now you just need to, to install the DKMs and ZFS Utils Linux. Uh, Apt will actually already ins will automatically install the rest of the dependencies, just according to what you type in here. So just these two, and it'll install the rest of the dependencies. You're, you'll be ready to go. So sudo apt install ZFS DKMs and ZFS utils Linux. Hit enter here and it's already done because 
Now, for you having not set it up yet, it's going to be a while before that finishes. So just go get you some coffee and whatnot. It's, it's fine. It, it takes a while, but it's it's well well worth the wait. So now you got but now you've got the DKMs, uh, ZFS utils, and all the dependencies installed. Now you need to install the kernel module. So now you do sudo modprobe ZFS. Hit enter, and there you go. Now there, now there are some system D things that you got to do to make sure everything is uh, ready at boot uh, after booting up. You know, like enabling the ZFS target and the import cache and that kind of thing. So, what you're going to want to do is actually, I've now would be a good time to show you my script. So, I'm going to go over here and show you the script. So, I've actually, I've actually already automated this. So. If you wanted to set this up the easy way, you can clone my repository over at uh, github.com slash Linux Dabbler, uh, debian install scripts, and I have lots and lots of scripts over here. I'm actually working on making this a little easier. But 107zfs.sh, that's the one that's the one you want for setting up ZFS. Kind of self-explanatory, I guess. Uh, you can either copy this and put it in paste it into a text editor, make it executable and whatnot. Or you can just clone the whole repository if, you, if you're interested in the other scripts that I've got. This is the uh, ZFS services that we, that we needed, uh, ZFS target, import cache, mount, and this is restarting the services here. So, because if you enable it, it doesn't start it. Because if you enable it, it's it will start it on boot but it won't start it right now so you can go back and actually change all of these to start if you wanted to go about that so now that you've got everything set up so how do we make a make an array so let's find out there is a wonderful there's wonderful documentation for zfs uh the best one that i have found has been the gig diary uh, Solaris ZFS command line. Uh, you really don't have to worry about this stuff here, like the C O T O D O, because what you're going to want to do is actually go by the disk ID. So, and we swap back to the terminal, and I'll show you what I'll show you what I'm talking about. sudo zpool list. This is my zpool here, or and what it is, it is two eight terabyte hard drives set up in a mirrored pool. Uh, I actually got a super good deal on these drives at the time anyway. They've actually come down in price now if you're interested in uh, buying a, uh, an eight terabyte, a couple eight terabyte drives and setting this up for yourself. This is a really good solution. I've been very, very pleased with it. So this is the Z pool list. I've actually already created, uh, I've created it. This is actually, I created this pool actually in the FreeNAS box a couple of years ago and just and every time I've reinstalled Linux I've just imported this pool or that pool into the system and it's been it has worked really well ever since you know that's one of the wonderful things about software defined storage I've I'm a big big proponent of of that so if we go back oh I need to show you uh, disk ID so ls dash l slash dev slash disk by ID and when you look at this you're going to want to go to the WMN and right here see ATA WD I have two WD drives in here so SDB and SDC if you're looking at those so come down here to the WMN and you don't want one or nine or whatever. You just want SDB and SDC. Yours are probably going to be different, but you're going to want that string of characters there and this string of characters here. So what you what you can do is actually copy those and put them in a and put them in a text file or something just to kind of save that string of files or string of numbers, letters, whatever. So save that. Then. You'll go over here 
and you can create a data pool or or whatever you want to call it so, you know it, a lot of your uh, a lot of your tutorials will call it tank but you can name it whatever you want so right here zpool create data pool Z, zpool create you know that's to force the creation of a data pool and this is just the one drive so what you so and you know just kind of just kind of peruse this right here this is a wonderful little utility here and if you want a more in-depth video than what i'm than what i can give you know uh, I would recommend going over to YouTube to ZFS Bootcamp. This was uh, this video was created by Linda Cately. It's about an hour and forty-two minutes long. So I mean, it, it's a it's a long video, but it, there is some wonderful, wonderful information in here. And you know, she's not using Linux. She's uh, she's using Solaris, I believe. But all that stuff is going to translate. So she has a way of explaining things to make all of you know all this craziness make sense. And I have I've I've gone back and looked and watched this video a few a few times and there is some wonderful information in here. I uh, highly 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 recommend watching this. If you go through here and you know there's you know all kind of maintenance commands, import commands. So this is what I would use because my my ZFS array is already set up. So if I reinstall Debian or Ubuntu or Arch or Fedora or whatever on on my system here. I would need to just import the array. When you import the array, it actually imports all of the data and all of the settings that you gave it to. There's all kinds of settings in here that you can give it. Uh, you can you can check performance. There is a lot of really good information, but I digress. So if you're interested in setting up something like this for yourself, I would recommend heading over to Amazon. Uh, you know, I'm not affiliated by any by any means. But this is just what I used here. I bought WD Elements Western Digital 8 terabyte USB drive. And I know it's a USB drive, but inside that drive is a standard SATA hard drive. It's WD Red. So you can take that and I think it's th four screws. I think it's four screws. Take out four screws, pop the clips and pull the drive out pop the drive into into the tower do it twice for redundancy of course uh, and follow along this here go by disk by ID and you'll be ready to go I have been very very pleased with having a CFS array in my system this has been a wonderful experience just because if it were a hardware defined storage you know if i had a raid card or if i had you know something that was uh telling uh telling the computer where to write a dip where to write to each disk in the array if that died if the raid controller died or if the computer itself died i would have a much harder time moving that array to a new system because but and seeing how ZFS is a software defined storage it's going to be a lot easier to install the you know install the kernel modules you know all the you know the DKMs and SPL and, and that and that kind of thing and then just import the array and you're done so it doesn't matter if it's set up on my system your system your neighbor's system whatever if you need to import a ZFS array, you can just import it, and because it's software defined, and it is a wonderful, wonderful system. I have, it's it's great. So that was installing ZFS on Debian. Uh, it's fairly easy, and I've even automated the process so to make it super duper easy. <laughs> so uh, ZFS is a wonderful, wonderful system, and. I highly recommend it. So, if you enjoyed the content, uh, please consider liking, subscribing. Uh, I do sporadic video uploads, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, it's been a crazy, crazy last several months. So, uh, hopefully, I'll be able to upload a little more often. So, anyway, that's about all I've got. Uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this content, uh, like, share, subscribe. 
and y'all have a nice day.